Good morning, friends. I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus, who is the one that is keeping us safe by interceding for us at the right hand of the Heavenly Father. Amen. We are at this point in time just close to a month in lockdown, and I am sure that many of you might be wondering how are we going to deal with what lies ahead of us. We have listened to our president on Thursday as he has informed us that this lockdown will continue, albeit it might ease up slowly but surely over time. But I do think that we need to prepare ourselves to be in this for quite a while. The lifting of the lockdown will happen in stages, as you have heard. Um, you will pick up in the news and in various platforms, you will hear about how this will happen and how it will influence all of us. I think the one issue that we specifically um, need to consider is the fact that our church, is, our church exists um, mainly for the elderly people here in Hawick, and therefore we would be influenced the longest uh, by this gradual lifting of the lockdown. Um, so we, we probably need to sit and think through and talk through and make decisions based on the fact that we will probably um, do things the way we're doing it at this point in time, for, for quite a significant time lying ahead of us. Um, so I would ask that you continue to pray for, for us, pray especially for the leaders, um, as, as we need to think through things, as we have to make decisions, um, and as we just have to, to work with what is happening with us and to us during this time. I continue to pray that you will experience um, the presence, the love of God, the grace of God, and that you will always know that no matter what's happening to you, um, no, what, no matter what's happening to your family, um, that you can always have the assurance that God is always close to you, that He loves you, and that He is really interested in anything and everything that is happening to you. I would ask that you continue to just lift up our church, on a continuous basis in your prayers. We will also send out an SMS um, at some stage where we will do a, a small survey just to find out who is um, we will also send out an SMS survey where we will ask um, how people have access to the internet or to YouTube, or whatever the case may be, so that we just can determine the best way to serve most people in our church. Um, there are some people that do not have access to internet, um, some people that do not have access to WhatsApp, and so therefore um, we need to find ways to reach those ones too, uh, in ways that we can be safe, both them and us, and that we adhere to the requirements of this lockdown. So please um, look out for that, and when you do receive that, respond to that um, as, as soon as possible, so that we can deal with these things. The service, the service, the message that I will do today, um, is, is a bit longer than normal, in the sense that um, after my prayer, I am playing a video with three songs. Now you can choose to skip and move forward um, in the video if you don't want to listen through all three of the songs. But I would suggest that you maybe take some time, find a place, a quiet place, a place where you can just be by yourself and your spouse or whoever else is with you. And that you truly use this time to just worship, to praise God and to allow Him to speak to you during this time. So, um, I pray that you will hear God speak to you, and that you will find a, a word of comfort, and a word of encouragement, a word of grace, and a word of love from our Heavenly Father. So, let us pray. 
Gracious Father, we bless you. Thank you for being the King of glory. Thank you for being our Father, Redeemer, Shepherd and King. Thank you for reconciling us back to you through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. We are thankful to you for the Holy Spirit who is the promised Advocate who empowers us to be effective witnesses to your Kingdom here on earth. Thank you for loving us and watching over us. Lord, let all that we are praise you. We will praise you as long as we live. We will sing your praises with our dying breath. Our hope is in you, the Lord our God. You created heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. You keep every promise forever. We stand amazed at how awesome you are. Magnificent Father, Today we revere and honor you. You are our God and we submit our loyalty and adoration to you. You are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. You existed before time and created everything that exists. Lord, only you have held the ocean in your hand. You measured off the heavens with your fingers and you know how much the earth weighs. You are truly amazing. Yes, Father, all nations of the world are but a drop in the bucket to you. They are nothing more than dust on the scales. You pick up the whole earth as though it were a grain of sand. Lord, you sit above the circle of the earth. The people below are like grasshoppers to you. You spread out the heavens like a curtain, and you make your tent from them. When we look up at the sky, we know that you created every star that we see. You bring them out like an army, one after another, calling each by its name. Because of you, because of your great power and incomparable strength, not a single one is missing. Lord, you are the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. You never grow weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of your understanding. You are good to everyone and shower compassion on all of your creation. Mighty King, you are our banner and shield, our strength and protection. Yes, Lord Jesus, you are our Saviour, our Redeemer, and through you we are justified. Holy Spirit, you are our Advocate, our Helper, and the source of our power. We revere and honour you, the Triune God. Praise be to your name. O Glorious Father, Please let your ears always be attentive to our prayers. Our Holy Spirit, continue to teach us how to love you, Jesus, our brother, and our Father God. Please touch the hearts of those who do not adore the Lord, and help them to love him with all their hearts, soul, and strength. Please remind each of us of the many things that God does for us daily, and help us to spend more time in praise and adoration. Help us to be a thankful congregation who reflects the glory of God by the way we live our lives. O Holy Spirit, help us to always be mindful of your presence in our daily lives and help us to be quick to respond when you quicken us to action. O forgiving Father, forgive us for our sins of pride, rebellion, disobedience, selfishness, hatred and idolatry. Yes, Lord, forgive us for a half-hearted worship. Forgive us for disrespecting your name and treating you irreverently. O Lord, forgive us for not spending time with you in the busyness of our lives. Forgive us, Lord, as we do not always speak about you to our family and friends. Lord Jesus, forgive us when we take your sacrifice for granted. O Holy Spirit, forgive us when we do not acknowledge you or your presence in our daily lives. Yes, Lord, forgive us for those sins that we commit knowingly and unknowingly. Our Holy Spirit, remind us of all those we need to forgive and help us to be quick to forgive. Yes, Holy Spirit, help us to not heal to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Oh yes, Lord God, thank you that we can come and proclaim that through Jesus you have given us life and that you have removed, Lord, our sins from us as far as the east is from the west. I thank you, Lord, that you do not remember them anymore. So we thank you and praise you, Lord God, the Almighty. You reign. Great and marvelous are your works. 
Just and true are your ways, O King of the nations. Who will not fear you and glorify your name? You alone are holy. All nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous deeds have been revealed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Yes, friends, it is a big privilege for us to really worship and praise God like that. And, uh, and I pray that as you have sang through those three songs, as you just allow those songs to speak to you, that you have found that place of really being in the presence of our Heavenly Father, of Jesus and Holy Spirit. And my message this morning comes from Mark 1, 29 to 39. And I'm just looking at the fact that we, we are in a place where we can experience God's kingdom through the presence of Jesus in our lives. Mark 1 verse 29 to 39 reads as follows. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to her took her hand and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, Let us go somewhere else, to the nearby villages, so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in the synagogues and driving our demons. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God for His Word. I think there is two events in the story that I would like to focus on this morning. 
I believe that these two events is very significant for us even where we are today as it was for those small group of people around Jesus um, more than 2,000 years ago. I think the first event is when Simon or the people around Simon, the companions of Simon, um, because at this point in time they were not yet disciples of Jesus, but they were sitting there listening to Jesus speaking in the synagogue. And so they invited him to come to Simon's house. So he taught in the synagogue. He, he taught with one who, who had authority. And the crowds listened to his words. These people had a clear, in, had a clear sense that he was somebody that was different from the people they have met so far. They have met before. There was a man with an unclean spirit that walked into the synagogue. Jesus healed this man by driving out the unclean spirit. The companions of Simon probably must have been impressed because they wanted to know more about this Jesus. So they listened to him and they experienced the healing that he performed. So after the service, they went to Simon's house to get something to eat. Now notice that there was nothing about Simon's mother-in-law that actually led them to this house. They just went. Uh, Simon was a gracious host and he wanted to feed his friends. Notice that the text says, Now when Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with fever, and immediately they told him of her, and he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and the fever left her, and she served them. You see, they told Jesus that she was sick, but they didn't ask him to do anything. They did not demand anything of Jesus. They only made him aware of the problem. And I think we need to know that the issue here is they wanted Jesus to be in a relationship with Simon's mother-in-law, and somehow they knew that he would take it further from there. Now, as I said before, these disciples have not been very long with Jesus, they saw him in the synagogue, they saw him do some healings, and I think that at this point in time they sort of told him this is the problem, and then they left him to actually do what he wants to do. Um, I think that many times we need to be in that same place. Instead of us trying to prescribe to Jesus and to tell him, oh Lord, you need to do this and do that, we just need to say to him, Lord, this is the problem, and then stand back. And allow him to take it forward and do what he needs to do. Notice that the text says, so he went to her. You see, Jesus took the initiative and brought grace into Simon's mother-in-law's life. Jesus acted on his own accord. Jesus acted and the woman responded. After the fever left her, she got up and she served Jesus. We do not even know this woman's name. He does not say anything about her faith. All we know is that she was brought into a relationship with Jesus and he responded. It, in the end, it all depended on Jesus and not the woman. Notice too that the disciples told Jesus of her. They began the relationship, but Jesus went boldly ahead and came into a personal relationship with this woman. He acted. He took the initiative. He brought his grace into the brokenness of this woman's life. She was a passive receiver. You see, we do not have any account of what this woman said, but we do know her actions. Her response afterwards when she was healed was to serve them. She went to the kitchen and made dinner. I think the important story for us in this is today is to see that being in a relationship with Jesus is important. And in that relationship... We need to let Jesus bring his act of grace into our lives as he sees fit. Because he is the God of love. He will do for us what he wants to do out of his loving heart. We must trust as the disciples did. Trust Jesus with the faith and conviction which will allow him to act for us. I think the following illustration might help to, to, to guide us or to, to help us to, to see how we need to trust Jesus. There was a, in a textile factory 
where threads are woven into fabrics, there is a sign above the machines. If the threads become tangled, call the foreman. A new employee found the threads on a machine badly tangled. Frantically, she tried to untangle them. The foreman came by and said to her, Why didn't you call for me? Oh, she replied, I was just trying to do my best. Then very pointedly, the foreman told her, Doing your best includes calling the foreman. You see, friends, the ever-present God is available for our help. And we have not done our best until we have invited Him into the tangled scenes of our lives. We can know that no matter how much difficulty we are in, Jesus can handle it in His own way, as illustrated by the following story. A small boy was in a boat with his father. As he looked over the side, the water appeared dangerously deep. He asked his father, Daddy, is the water over my head? Yes, son, it is over your head. Then after a pause, Daddy, is the water over your head? And the father replied, Yes, son, it is even over my head. After some thought, the boy then asked, Daddy, is the water over God's head? Now it was the father's turn to pause for a moment in thought. And after a few moments, he said, No, my son, the water is never over God's head. You see, friends, in our relationship with Jesus, we need, him to, we need to allow Him to handle our problems in His own way. Like the disciples, we must be in a relationship with Christ. Then have faith, the conviction, the assurance that He can handle the troubled waters, troubled waters of our life. Only Jesus can handle every situation in life. The text illustrates it to us clearly in verse 32 and 34. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and he healed many who were sick with various diseases, and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. <clears throat> the second significant event in this passage says, And in the morning, a great while before day, he, Jesus, arose and went out to a lonely place, and there he prayed. Most of the times when we read this passage and in other passages such as Mark 7.24 and Mark 6.31 where we read that Jesus went to a lonely place to pray we, we think of a quiet, peaceful time a time to collect thoughts and recharge batteries. However, I would like to suggest that this was far from the point. It was not a peaceful time but a time of soul searching, a time of turmoil, a time of decision. It was a time for Jesus to focus in on the mission his father called him to do. Reverend Thomas Long, um, a, preacher, a preacher, wrote a book, Shepherds and Bathrobes, and he writes the following. We have a misunderstanding of this time because the word is, which is translated lonely place is ermorph, which is better translated as wilderness. The ermorph is a holy place, alive with the presence of God. The Ermolf is a dangerous place, the atmosphere charged with the possibility of betrayal. The temptation to follow the will of the crowd instead of the will of the Father was present in the Ermolf. Peter and his companions told him, Everyone is searching for you. They were saying, Come back to Capernaum, be the wonder worker, be the people's private priest. There was Jesus in the Ermolf, the lonely place with two paths leading out. One path led back to Capernaum and a life of comfort, comfortable popularity. The other path led on to Golgotha and a costly sacrifice. One path led to a place where all were crying, Hosanna. The other path led to a place where all would cry, crucify him. The lonely place was no place of serene reflection. It was a place of momentous decision. The kingdom of self-interest versus the kingdom of God. Facing the tempter again, Jesus decided, Let us go into the next towns, that I may preach there also, for that is why I came. I think, friends, this is a struggle that we can see throughout Scripture. The struggle to please the crowd versus the struggle of what Jesus' mission was all about. That struggle we see in the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000. After Jesus had fed the 5,000, he went up into the hills to a lonely place to pray because he knew the crowds would come to him the next day and beg for more bread. 
He could have given them the bread that fills the stomach, but instead he gave them the living bread, the bread of his wisdom and the bread of his flesh, as it says in John 6. Over and over again in Scripture, the lonely place was a place of struggle, a place of decision for Jesus, to do the will of the people or to do the will of God. In our, lonely pla- in our lonely places, the same thing happens. We decide if we want to be in a relationship with Jesus Christ, allowing Him to bring His grace into our lives as He sees fit. Or if we want to be in control, if we want to be in charge, or if we want to be the boss. In our prayer life, it is a constant struggle to allow Jesus to be in control and not us. Prayer is the time to surrender our will to the will of Christ. Prayer is the time to cement our relationship with Christ as we surrender our will and allow Him to bring a measure of His grace as He sees fit in our, tender, in our troubled lives. A closing example that would speak to all the lonely places, the broken places in each of our lives where we cry as Job did about the unfairness of this world and we, are, and we allow Christ to come and touch us with the kingdom of God. Elie Wiesel was a Romanian-born American writer that was a Holocaust survivor. In his book, The Town Beyond the Wall, there is a rebellious character who has profoundly experienced the lonely place of human suffering and who chooses not to bear this in silence. He loudly laments, crying out angrily to God that his faith is unjust, indeed that God is unjust. It would seem that he had fallen into the snare of temptation But he confesses, I want to blaspheme, and I can't quite manage it. I go up against God, I shake my fist, I froth with rage, but it's still a way of telling him that he is there. That denial itself is an offering to his grandeur. The shout becomes a prayer in spite of me. You see, friends, our places of loneliness can be places of great disturbance, our own Ermov. But as we spend time in our Ermov, as we speak, even sometimes shout, to the Father, whether we question Him or struggle with Him, it is a time where we actually show that we take God's power and presence serious. And through that moment, God comes closer to us. So friends, wherever you are in this moment of your life, wherever we may find ourselves at this moment in time, we can know that God is always willing to come closer to you and to me. Just as Jesus went to Simon's mother-in-law without being specifically asked to do something, He will come to you and me and do for us that which He knows we need most. And in that process, we become recipients of God's kingdom here on earth with us. I pray that you will find Jesus comes to you whenever you wonder whether you need to approach Him with your need that you will meet Him in your moment of wondering and, and do what He knows you need the most, and that you will find that He is closer than you ever imagined. Let us pray. Oh yes, Jesus, thank you that we know that you are always closer to us than we can ever imagine. And Lord, that we will also know that just like with Simon's mother-in-law, you know already what we need. And Lord, that before we can even bring our needs to you, when we do bring our needs to you, that we will sit back and allow you to do what needs to be done. And Lord, that you will do the right thing, that you will do what you know needs to happen. But Lord, also that we will be in that place that even in the moments when we struggle, Lord, when we spend time with you, Lord, that we will also be be free to to rage towards you in acknowledgement of your presence. And Lord, that we will not question and doubt that you are present with us. And even in those moments, Lord, when we lift up to you our struggles, that that even can be the moments when you come closer to us and that you enfold us into your loving arms. And that you will show us, Lord, that you are always wanting to be close with us. And Lord, that we will experience the the presence of your kingdom. We will experience the presence of your love, your mercy and your grace. And so Lord, we just put ourselves into your hands and we, we say thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, and thank you, Holy Spirit. 
as we pray these prayers in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Friends, I pray that you will continue to just experience God's grace and love and presence more and more each and every moment of every day. And I want to close off with a song that you probably do not know, but I want you to, to listen to, to the song, listen to the heart of the song. Um, it is a songwriter that um, I have come to, to really respect with the depth of the words um, that she is singing and um, many times the, the words is actually the cry of my heart also. So I pray that you will, will sense God um, just drawing closer to you as you listen to the song. And as you make the words of this song, the, the call of your heart, the, the desire of your heart in this moment. So God bless and keep safe. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Speak what is true. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my